What is up? I got a cold, so uh, please, if I sound weird, I always sound weird. So lately, I've been talking about some pretty gloomy subjects. I've been talking about death, kidnappings. Today, we're going to change it up. We're just going to do like an, a normal vocabulary video. We're going to talk about tornadoes. Yes, and all the different types of tornadoes. It's going to be a good time. We're going to talk about large tornadoes, small tornadoes, water tornadoes, fire tornadoes, dust devils, volcano nados. Volcano nados be a good band name. So we, we're, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. I even made this useful chart to help us go through the terms. Yeah, it turns out there's a lot of different types of whirlwinds. So we're going to talk about those. Let's get into the video, but before we do, be sure to like and subscribe for more tornado related content. Okay, so hold up. Before, before we get into it, we need a blanket term because there's an actual term for this phenomenon. It's called a whirlwind. Whirls. Whirls. I can't say that word. What is a whirlwind? Uh, when you see things, when wind whirls, it's a, it's a whirl, whirlwind right there. That's our uh, top term on our chart that we have here. Now we're going to go down and we're going to talk about some of the weaker whirlwinds. Now one good example of a pretty weak whirlwind that everyone has seen, the leaf eddy. There's some leaves on the ground and a gust of wind came through and it was blocked by a tree or a house and it around that tree creating a little vortex. Think of like a stream of water and there's a rock and then the water goes around the rock and then it kind of curls behind using my microphone as an example here. That's an eddy and it happens with wind as well. Okay, so we're gonna step it up a little bit and we're gonna talk about the dust devil. Everyone has heard of the dust devil, they've seen them. So what is a dust devil and how do they form? Well, one aspect of dust devils that differs from other forms of whirlwinds is the fact that they almost always form under clear blue skies. That's because in order for a dust devil to occur, the ground needs to be hot, like very hot and dry. That's why they are so common in the desert. Now you also need a cooler atmosphere for these to form. So the hot ground begins to heat up the air right above the surface of the ground, and then that hot air rises. And as the hot air rises up, the cooler atmospheric air rushes in to fill the low pressure void caused by the rising hot air. If conditions are right, as the cool air comes in, a vortex can begin to form. Eventually, this creates a self-sustaining cycle that pulls up the dust and debris with it. Eventually, things cool off and the devil dissipates. Dust devils are usually harmless with wind speeds in the 60 mile per hour range. However, they can grow to be quite big and even dangerous. Now, there have been a few relatively strong dust devils that have actually killed people in the past. One particularly strong dust devil occurred on September 14th at the Coconino County Fairgrounds in Arizona. This caused property damage and a few personal injuries. Deaths are very rare, but they do occur. One recent deadly example occurred in China, where a dust devil unfortunately claimed the lives of two children. These also happen on Mars quite frequently, so that's pretty interesting. A similar vortex to the dust devil is the snow devil, aka snow spout or snow tornado. Snow devils are way more rare but they do occasionally happen. They do occur under similar circumstances. Now obviously snow melts when it heats up, so it really takes a perfect mix of conditions for these to occur. They definitely look sweet though. Let's talk steam devils. These usually occur over lakes during the early winter or late fall months when the air is cool, but the lakes are still relatively warm. One example of a large steam devil came with an air temp of negative six degrees Fahrenheit and a water temp of 34 degrees Fahrenheit. When you have these major differences in temperature, you can get that beautiful fog over any body of water's surface, especially in the morning hours. Mix that fog with some cooler dry air above and a light wind and you can create an unstable atmosphere and the creation of a steam devil. They are very rare. In fact, they've only been kind of talked about since the 70s. However, you can see them quite frequently at Yellowstone National Park, like in this video here. These almost always happen over warm bodies of water, but they can happen over wet grass or something like that. Definitely cool, definitely spooky. I imagine there was at least one Victorian farmer back in the 1880s who saw one like out, out in a field early in the morning and thought it was a ghost. I'm sure it happened. So we're going to move up the intensity a little, um, but still we're not at that tornado level yet, but we're, we're stepping it up a little bit. We're going to talk about the gust nado. So the gust nado is interesting because like traditional tornadoes, these do occur during thunderstorms. However, they are not the same thing as a traditional tornado. Gust nados essentially form from a gust front or a thunderstorm outflow. You know, when you see a storm roll in over you and all of a sudden the winds start to pick up, 
Yeah, that's the gust front. And these strong winds can form eddies that essentially look like ground-based swirls of dust and debris. Kind of like a leaf eddy like we talked about earlier, but on a grander thunderstorm scale. The difference between tornadoes and gustnadoes are that gustnadoes are ground-based and do not connect with the cloud above it. Gustnadoes are way weaker than tornadoes, but they can be dangerous. Some speculate that the stage collapse disaster at the Indiana State Fair in 2011 may have been caused by a gustnado. Next on the list is fire. Yes, fire tornadoes and fire whirls. Now these are two different forms of whirlwinds. We're gonna talk about the fire whirls first. So how do they form? Well, fire is hot, obviously. And just like with our other previous whirlwinds, they form due to a rising hot air updraft. Surface air then comes in to replace the air beneath the updraft to fan the flames. And in right conditions can cause a swirling vortex. They are still quite rare though. You gotta have some perfect conditions for these to form. Now, fire tornadoes or fire nados are different from fire whirls. While fire whirls are little spin-ups that quickly dissipate, Fire tornadoes are full-fledged tornadoes caused by the mass of fire as a whole. Similar to other whirlwinds, these are caused by a major updraft and heat. However, this would be like if the whole fire organized one major circulating updraft of smoke and flames. These are quite rare, but one well-documented case occurred in 2018 during the Carr Fire in Redding, California. This tornado produced winds up to 150 miles per hour, which would classify this tornado as an EF3. Here's a time-lapse video and you can actually see the rotation. One forest fire in 2020 produced enough rotation that the National Weather Service issued a tornado warning. So I was trying to think of more whirlwinds and I was like, what about lava? I just thought of lava. So I looked up lava tornado and apparently they also exist. I'm guessing it's the same sort of effect. Hot lava, cool atmosphere little vortex forms. I don't know much about them, couldn't find too much info about them, but there are videos online if you want to check out those videos. Moving out to the ocean or a lake, we're going to talk about water spouts and water tornadoes. Uh, so we have two different forms of water spouts. We have the fair weather water spout and we have the normal tornadic water spout. Fair weather water spouts are non-tornadic and actually form when the weather is calm, hence the name fair weather. They typically form under flat cumulus clouds and grow from the water up through an updraft. They start off as dark spots on the water and then go from a little spraying sea base vortex to eventually a funnel at full maturity. They also tend to form during light winds, which can actually push the water spouts a little. They are usually quite weak, but can still pose a threat to beachgoers and boats. So y'all should definitely keep your distance if you see one. Water spouts have been well documented for centuries and have had a mythical reputation throughout history. Water spouts have also been known to cause fish to rain down, similar to that of a sharknado. On the other hand, you can also have an actual legit water tornado, which is a tornado formed from a supercell that happens to go over water. So a traditional tornado that was on land that crossed a lake or whatever, and it becomes a water tornado. Okay, let's move on to land, and we're getting closer to tornadoes, and this is kind of a tornado. Technically, it's a tornado, so I guess we're in tornadoes now. And that is the land spout. So what the heck is a land spout? Well, essentially, they are weaker non-supercell tornadoes. So while most tornadoes form from a mesocyclonic rotating thunderstorm called a supercell, which we'll get to, and come down from the cloud base as a funnel cloud, these tornadoes actually start from the ground up, similar to that of a fair weather water spout. They start off as rotation on the ground, and the updraft from the thunderstorm sucks up dirt picked up by the rotating ground-based vortex. As the dirt moves up into the atmosphere, the land spout's rotation begins to tighten, giving that classic land spout translucent cylinder tube look. They also tend to be wider at the base as opposed to traditional tornadoes that are wider at the top. All right, we finally made it. We are now in the major tornado category. True mesocyclonic supercell tornadoes. Wizard of Oz tornado, classic textbook tornado. The strongest whirlwind on earth is the traditional tornado. We're talking tornadoes that form from a massive towering storm known as a supercell. Sometimes these are referred to as thunderclouds. You've probably seen them off in the distance and they look freaking sweet. 
but these can reach up to 50,000 feet high. Here's a diagram showing a supercell compared with other clouds. So even scientists aren't 100% sure how tornadoes form. What is known is that these supercells have a rotating column of air in the middle called a mesocyclone. And this is heated hot air. And there's something else called a rear flank downdraft that is made up of cool air. And then this comes in, feeds the mesocyclone, and then science happens, and then a tornado starts to come out the bottom. Look, I'm not a meteorologist. I'm uh, more of a humanities guy. But this funnel cloud starts to appear out of the base of the supercell in what is known as the wall cloud. Now, what is a funnel cloud? Well, a funnel cloud is essentially a tornado that has yet to touch or affect the ground beneath. Essentially, it's just a little tornado, you know, slowly making its way down. Making my way down. Once it hits the ground, boom, you have yourself a tornado. Okay, so let's talk different types of tornadoes. The first type we are going to talk about is the rope tornado. These tend to occur during the early or late phases of a tornado, and they tend to be weak, typically EF0 or EF1. They can get stretched out by the wind and even loop. They're pretty sweet looking, uh, but they're still dangerous and they can easily transform into more powerful tornadoes. Some rope tornadoes strengthen and turn into what are known as cone tornadoes. Now cone tornadoes are your stereotypical tornado shape. These are the kinds of tornadoes that you like draw in your notebooks for fun. You know, just classic tornado. These are strong. They can be EF1s, EF2s, and technically they can be EF5s if we're talking about the Eile Manitoba tornado. Now there's also the stovepipe tornado, which is a tornado that has the same shape from the base all the way up to the cloud. But some cone tornadoes can develop into what is known as a wedge tornado. Now wedge tornadoes are wide and super dangerous, and winds can easily be in the 200 mile per hour range. So these are your super wide tornadoes. These are called wedge tornadoes. Now, some wedge tornadoes can actually be multi-vortex tornadoes. Multi-vortex tornadoes are very rare, but they are very powerful. Essentially what they are is there's a bunch of smaller vortexes within the larger vortex. And you can sometimes see them in videos like little horizontal vortexes shooting out the side. The classic dead man walking photo. I think in Twister, like that one scene, there's like multiple vortexes. Strongest whirlwinds tend to be multi-vortex tornadoes. Now, any of these tornadoes can also be what is referred to as a rain-wrapped tornado. Rain-wrapped tornadoes are very dangerous and essentially make the tornado invisible. One very notable example of a rain-wrapped tornado was a 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado. Many historic tornadoes with large death tolls have been rain-wrapped because sometimes you just can't see them and you don't realize the danger is there. We also have a type of tornado known as the drill bit tornado. These are small, thin tornadoes with really high wind speeds, almost like a drill, just tearing into the ground. They're definitely a really crazy thing to watch. Okay, let's talk about things that are not tornadoes and that are not whirlwinds and have no rotation at all, but sometimes people get a little confused and they think that they do. One example is the scud cloud. Scud standing for scattered cumulus under deck. These essentially are clouds that have a cone appearance to them, but they are not rotating. They just, they just look like tornadoes, but they're not tornadoes. Sometimes you can see them in shelf clouds. I think there was a recent example of one at Disney World. We also have a shelf cloud. Now, sometimes when you see the shelf cloud moving in, it's got those like fingers of the clouds kind of kind of moving in and the little fingers. Yeah, those are not true uh, tornadoes. Shelf clouds can also be referred to as SLCs or scary looking clouds. Some people think that a scary looking cloud could be a tornado, but in reality, uh, no, they're not tornadoes. I mean, tornadoes are scary looking clouds, I guess, but you know what I mean. There's also the cold air funnel. What the frick is a cold air funnel? Let me look that up because I don't remember what that is. Cold air funnel. Um, a funnel cloud or rarely a small, relatively weak tornado that can develop from a smaller shower or thunderstorm when the air aloft is unusually cold. Okay, there you go. Cold air funnel, baby. All right, and that is it. That is our list of whirlwinds. And here's the full chart. Pretty crazy. One of nature's craziest phenomena, for sure. So there you have it. There's all your uh, whirlwinds and tornadoes and dust devils. Quite a list. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you one we got more kind of death related videos coming up so stay tuned for that thanks for watching see you next week